Well, at this moment, the countdown for the launch of the Space Shuttle Atlantis is in a nine-minute hold. This is the second day in a row NASA has tried to get that bird aloft. They failed yesterday. NASA officials say the weather remains a problem today and conditions apparently are not getting any better. CNN correspondent Tom Mintier is here with the latest on Atlantis, Tom. You know, when you look at the uh, situation at the Cape and you, and you see the blue skies in the background, it's hard to understand what the problem is with the weather, but it's something that you cannot see. NASA has been sending up weather balloons and been getting bad information back down from altitudes of about 28 to 30,000 feet. There is wind shear at those uh, altitudes and it can't launch the space shuttle with that kind of a problem going on. They are also running out of time. They have to be watching the clock very closely. The countdown, stuck now at nine minutes, must resume by 9.23 to get in before the 9.32 Eastern time closure of the window. The astronauts have been sitting in the sh shuttle Atlantis for about four hours now. They uh, left their uh, crew quarters uh, early this morning, as they did yesterday morning, and uh, it's uh, getting to be not a good time as they uh, walk out uh, to the Astro van and take the uh, long ride back out to the pad for uh, what they figured probably going in would be some time of sitting. Uh, Commander Robert Gibson is no stranger to the delays. As uh, commander of Columbia, he experienced a record seven postponements and delays and had to go out to the pad six times. So this is only his second time. CNN correspondent John Zarella is uh, live at the Kennedy Space Center this morning. And John, uh, the clock is not running there, but it is running here and it looks like uh, the possibility of Sunday is uh, looming on the horizon. Certainly looks that way right now, but 24 hours ago, oh, about 10 minutes ago, 24 hours ago, they had already canceled. They had already delayed and scrubbed. So we are hearing some spec... It's speculation only again, and it was the same speculation yesterday, that they could extend the launch window, perhaps by as much as one more hour, giving them until <coughs> roughly 10.30. The problem you alluded to uh, is, of course, wind shear. And what happens, to explain it briefly, is that as the shuttle ascends through the atmosphere, it is programmed for certain winds that they expect it will encounter. When they have the shear, they're getting a change in direction and a change in speed. And what that's doing is it could literally be buffeting the ship and hitting it at some of the stress points. And those stress points are not designed and not programmed to take that. An interesting thing is that if the trajectory of this mission had been different, we don't know exactly what's being carried in the cargo bay, but if the trajectory had been different, they say there's a possibility that they could have launched today and possibly yesterday. Trajectory meaning the angle where they want this shuttle to go. Uh, as I just mentioned, we can't show you what's in here because it's a secret mission, so we won't open the cargo bay. But what everybody has been saying is that we, we think this is a secret high-tech spy satellite that uh, will be used uh, to spy on, on the Soviet Union and even to, to be able to direct B, the, uh, the B-1 bombers and the stealth bombers in the future to future targets. Uh, uh, but also, it could also be used to direct troops on the ground and also to monitor, we understand, to, to monitor compliance with treaties by the Soviet Union. That's what's been speculated. That's what everybody thinks the shuttle is carrying, but nobody really knows, and the Department of Defense certainly isn't saying. Tom? John, with the three hours they have in the window, Part of the reason for that time constraint is that uh, at a certain time frame in the timeline of the mission, they have to launch the satellite and they have to be in the right position to do that. If they extend an hour, how does that change the timeline for putting the satellite out? Can it cause them problems later down the road tomorrow or the next day when they want to indeed launch the satellite? I don't think so. I, again, because it is a secret mission, they may have built that time in. They're telling us the launch window is 6.30 to 9.30, but indeed it may not be 6.30 to 9.30. They may have that extra latitude on the, on the high side of the window. So it may not cause them any problems. And again, when you're dealing with a spaceship like the shuttle, it's a little bit different than when you're launching on expendable rockets. You have a little more maneuverability and latitude once you get into orbit. So if indeed, uh, as I say, we haven't canceled yet, and as yesterday at this time they had, so I believe they're waiting for this last data from the weather balloons and the, uh, the plane that is up now, the shuttle training aircraft, uh, to get some, some final data before they go ahead and scrub or, or go with today's mission. Tom? All right, John, we'll continue to monitor the situation down there. About 22 minutes left in the window. That is, unless they extend it, or it will be Sunday before Atlantis makes its trip into space. We'll continue to monitor the developments at the Kennedy Space Center and bring them to you as they develop. I'm Tom Intier.
NASA, in trying to launch the shuttle Atlantis, is up against the launch window, which, as far as we know, Tom Mintier, is due to slam shut in about 15 minutes from now. That's correct, but things are improving now at the Kennedy Space Center. The weather, they say, the winds aloft, the wind shears that they were very concerned about, are improving. The latest information from the weather balloons they have say that uh, the w winds are improving and that uh, the chances are improving that they may get off today, that uh, there may be, a, may be a launch. Here's uh, Hugh Harris. Various systems, and of course the mission management team has the final say uh, to the launch director as to whether you pick up a count and proceed towards launch. One of the problems that uh, has been looked at during the, the preparations has been the temperatures on one of the water spray boilers, which is used for cooling uh, the lubrication oil and the other parts of one of the auxiliary uh, power units. It's been determined that the, uh, that, that is operating uh, probably, or uh, they have been looking at the, uh, the temperatures uh, and the, the sensors and the heaters, and it has been determined that it's operating properly. The, uh, if we should pick up the, uh, the count, it is possible that a momentary hold could be caused, though, by the, uh, uh, the temperature indications. Uh, however, those are not a, uh, a violation of the launch commit criteria. So Hugh Harris saying that uh, they are standing by and they could continue the count at any moment. The launch window closes at 9.32 Eastern Time. We will continue to uh, observe the situation and uh, bring you the updates as they become available. I'm Tom Mintier. All right, thank you, Tom. Let's and correspondent Tom Mintier is uh, covering NASA's efforts to get the space shuttle Atlantis aloft, uh, trying for a second day in a row. Things looking up again, Tom? Thing, things looking go right now. Right. Uh, the countdown has started at the Kennedy Space Center. They are down below five minutes now. They, it looks like that unless something happens in the next few minutes that Atlantis will be launched. Rain valve is closed. T minus four minutes, 25 seconds and counting. The residual liquid oxygen now flowing through the main propulsion system and back to the large storage tank to cool the engine system. There was some concern about the weather earlier. Winds aloft around 30,000 feet. The wind shear was a problem. They have been sending weather balloons up last night every few hours, but this morning it was almost as if every few minutes they would send a weather balloon up to report back. Just a few moments ago, the winds abated. They had no longer had the wind shear problem, and they decided to start the count. The main engine valves being checked. The orbiter flight control surfaces, such as elevon, speed brakes, and rudders being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to ensure they're ready for launch. T minus three minutes, 35 seconds and counting. All three engines uh, now being moved through a pattern uh, to verify their readiness to, and then they will be aligned to their start position. T minus three minutes, 19 seconds and counting. The last few minutes of the cliffhanger countdown that they were yeah, going T through. T minus two minutes, 55 that, seconds. Uh, the window may close. Uh, it was scheduled to close at about uh, six minutes from right now, but uh, the countdown clock, uh, which uh, had been blank for uh, days, has uh, been lit up at nine minutes and is now moving all the way down, it appears. Uh, uh, once they go into the ground launch sequencer control, uh, uh, the computers will take over. Weather hold will be called uh, because of TAL sites, and we will hold the clock at 31 seconds. All right, at 31 seconds, the transatlantic abort site, uh, whichever one they're using, because it's a Defense Department mission, evidently has a weather problem. So it isn't just the weather at the Kennedy Space Center they're concerned about. They say they're holding around 30 seconds. It is retracting. The crew has been asked to check the... Uh, the crew has checked the caution and warning. The clearing is complete. T minus two minutes, seven seconds, and counting. T minus one minute, 57 seconds, and counting. The crew has been asked to close the airtight visors on their helmets 
and start the oxygen supply to their pressure suits. These pressure suits are something new uh, post-Challenger. There is now an escape system uh, during the level portion of flight that they can use. This will be the second flight where these suits are being used uh, in case of an emergency. Minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. The clock will stop at 31 seconds because of a weather hold at the TAL site. The, at T minus one, uh, the ground launch sequencer will verify the shuttle main engines are ready to start. The liquid hydrogen tank now at flight pressure. By taking the countdown to 30 seconds, it means that uh, the condition at the uh, transatlantic abort site may clear. And counting. The sound suppression water system now armed. That uh, pre-liftoff water is released at T-minus 16 seconds. SRB joint heaters have also been turned off. Hydrogen uh, burn igniters have been armed. 